reciprocity action packed one sportsless welcome alfred okoligwe is here with us alfred it's good to have your sports tonight very good to you austin uh, delighted to be here mm. uh, you made reference mm. to ganatro that That's breakfast right. meeting this morning yeah. um i've never seen a coach um that has um that come with such calm disposition mm. nothing really upsets him mm. and uh some personal questions were asked uh, Ganaro, <laughs> and it, each time he provided an answer that you want to just relay with. Perhaps uh, maybe he's not come under uh, tremendous pressure from Nigerians as, as in um, the way we want to assess him. But each yeah. time um, we just, he's somebody that has a good heart. Yes, he might have made mistakes. Uh, like uh, one of the mistakes uh, he accepted and admitted he made was the delay in making changes in that crucial game against Argentina, Argentina. at the mm, World Cup. Mm. He was very honest about it. Yeah. Perhaps next time you will just count on his judgment and not, not the advice of um, those who, who are outside or mm. those who are supposed to advise him to, to take those decisions. So it's not it's not easy being a leader. Sometimes you just want to listen to your assistant and that's what happened. Instead he wanted to take Ahmed Musa off. They said, no, wait, 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 wait. The Argentines are scared of him. I could general says, uh, maybe next time. I just go go ahead and face action and consequences. Uh, so uh, that's it. So much will come out of that uh, breakfast meeting with Coach General that was organized today in Lagos. But let's talk about that one that you are looking forward to tomorrow. That's Nigeria taking on Equatorial Guinea in the African Women's Cup of Nations uh, Group B uh, match. That's the final group match. Nigeria lost their opening match to Bayana Bayana of South Africa crushed Zambia 4-0. Alfred is Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea, they used to be a force. In fact, when they see the Super Falcons, they sit up tight. But um, they've not been so good. They've been the whooping girls of the group. And they will say the excuse is because they didn't know that they were going to be part of the competition. But do you do you see any threats for um the Super Falcons when you take on Equatorial Guinea? No, not at this level. Uh, when it comes to being uh, competition ready, Obviously, this Equatorial uh, Guinea uh, team uh, was not anywhere near the level they were in time. Perhaps, maybe CAF have just put in uh, in place uh, measures to really check some of the things that, uh, that other nations complain about. I was at the African Women's, uh, then African Women's Championship, uh, now it's now the Af African Women's Cup of Nations in South Africa, where we happened to play Equatorial Guinea in the finals of the competition. And it was such a feisty encounter. They came with nationals from Brazil, from Nigeria, from Cameroon. It was like more like a United Nation of uh, uh, you know, players who, 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 were, who, were, who make up the national team of the Equatorial, Equatorial uh, Guineans. But this time around, because of all of the problems, only Claire to come to this comp competition a little over a week before uh, kickoff and the results on the field of play, they are effectively out of the competition. And so mm. um, it's expected that the Falcons will have a uh, good run and uh, maybe uh, just rack up the numbers yeah. to, to make sure they make it to the semifinals. And the lady right there wearing the number eight jersey, assistant Oshala, uh, has got some points to prove in tomorrow's match. Yes, uh, she's been, um, uh, she's come under severe criticism in this mm. competition, missing so many goals. And I think it's, it's a point that we need to make to these girls uh, that um, if we lose, we all lose together. Why not all? channel our energy, play as a team, you know, um, fight for each other. If you know somebody that is better placed to, to score against, instead of going for personal glory, why not just uh, play as a team and get the result? Because in the first game, truth be told, it's not as if the South Africans really overran the, uh, or it, it wasn't a game that they yeah. could have. It's a game they could have won. Yeah. It's a game yeah, they could have won. So, they didn't take their yeah, chances. Yeah, didn't take their chances when, when they win. And, and I think it would have just... It would have, uh, you know, put them in a position where they now know that they are beatable. Yes, they they might be overall in terms of results over the um, long period of time the best team on the continent, but they are beatable. The South Africans have proven it. Yeah. But thank God it's in the first month of the competition, <laughs> and so they have a point to prove that they can really fight as a team and win as. But a why team. is no one talking about Zambia? Because if Zambia beats South Africa. It means Zambia, Nigeria, and South Africa will have six points. And to come to, to come to goals difference, Alfred. So that group, for all that I know, uh, is it's, it's slippery. Anything has to happen, Alfred. The, the, the South Africans have, uh, I would say, they are in a very good position, position. not to mm. um, allow themselves to be beaten by, by this. It's, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. 
but of all of the uh, toughness that the and the bravado the, the Zambians want to want to display coming to the game against Nigeria, they were taught a football lesson. I mean, by the old uh, goal horses in this country and talk about the Nigerian team. And so the South Africans know that in order to secure that first position, because if they allow that first position to slip, it means they will play Cameroon. Nobody wants to play Cameroon. I'm sure the South Africans will not even be thinking of playing Cameroon. They'll say, okay, I uh, know these ones are a tough bunch. The Cameroonians are doing so. We're topping their own side of uh, the group. And so if we, if we eventually we don't make it to the top and maybe finish second, uh, the Cameroonians will be uh, the opponent. And so everybody just mm. wants to... Um, it's like having your destiny in your hands and you want to toy with yeah. it. I saw Francis Kyle, the guy um, in training right there, how important... Um, uh, what what sort of role can she play in tomorrow's match? A very crucial one. Mm -hmm. um, she won the uh, most valuable player in the last mm -hmm. uh, last game, and her excitement to go back. She's all over the social media celebrating. Why not? Um, yeah. In uh, 2010, when Nigeria won this competition, she was one of the uh, few young players that was pro. She, um, Francesco Dega, Ngozi Okubi, Dero uh, Pranozi, promoted from the junior team. Now they are the men's team of this team. Yeah. Uh, perhaps, maybe, the, maybe, uh, maybe they might not just survive the, uh, you know, to play in the next competition. For, for now, they are the senior players in this competition, and so they just have to prove that they've gathered enough experience to do well in this. So it's very key yeah. that they bring their A game. Mm -hmm. The likes of Francesco Dega, um, uh, uh, Sister Toshola, yeah. Desire of Pranose. That's right. So many of them. Played a good role in defense. So many of them. They, 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 they've, mm. they've, they've, these girls, uh, the last count, 2010 to 20, is eight years. Some of them started playing way before that 2010 yeah. when they wanted to come there. So we're looking at about 10 years' experience. Wow. I, I mean, under their belt, playing for the national team. I think they have, they should have the experience to navigate this um, last game and make That's it to right. the knockout That's stage. That's right. Equatorial Guinea gets ready. It's the Super Falcons. They will up their game. Let's listen to the coach, Thomas Denaby. Uh, he's been speaking uh, before that match against Equatorial Guinea. We'll listen to him when we come back. We'll go to Cape Coast. It's still our be standing by. More to come, so don't go anywhere. Stay. And we follow the plan. And we said already after the first game when we lost uh, against South Africa that we, we don't do any changes. We have trust in what we are doing and we keep on doing it better and better for each day. And we also said already after the first game that we probably will improve the team during the tournament. Uh, and I think uh, that is just one, what, what is going to happen, that we will improve the team and get better and better. So. I hope we will have our best performance so far tomorrow and uh, I hope it will stay the same way if we come to game four, that we will improve more. So that's it, uh, Super Focus head coach Thomas Danaby Alfred, the word he kept on using is this team must keep improving. And uh, improving, the, the target, you said the it started uh, going to this competition that the target for the Nigerian um, women's national team it's to make it to the World Cup in France. Okay. Uh, so yes, no pressure on you must win. No, not, no pressure. Just make it to France. And we know that getting to the finals of the country. Top three. That, you know, guarantees you a place in the World Cup, mm. in the World Cup. And, mm. and that will be a massive achievement for, for, for these girls. And, and, and so going into that, I think it just wants to take off the pressure of what we must do in this competition. But I, but I guess they learned their lessons. They've learned their lessons. Uh, and... Um, moving forward, uh, three more games and you, you're champions of this competition. Uh, it, it, it's that easy now. Okay, so let's see. I don't know if it's that easy. But let's go on this break. When we come back, my colleague Cecilia Amorway is standing by. She'll tell us more because she's right there in Cape Coast, Ghana. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us. <laughs> 